Hey, what's up? This is Animal Crossing DLC here. Something of a mini-series that we've done on this channel is essentially me documenting my experiences with a bunch of different techware retailers and the kinds of products that you're likely to receive from them. And uh, super glad to hear that those videos have been really helpful for you guys. And uh, it's only fair that by way of contrast, we look at the tippy top end of the techware scale as well. And who better to do that with than Acronym? It's possibly the most prestigious name in this space and for good reason, but that does come at a price. Even co-founder Errolson Hugh describes his jackets as ridiculously expensive. Of course, we'll be looking at a brand new ridiculously expensive jacket today, fresh from the FW21 season. It is, of course, the J16 GT in the lovely Alpha Green. We'll be going in-depth on this thing to get a bit of a better understanding of what it can do and my experience with this jacket so far as someone who owns probably too many acronym products already. And and for the relatively uninitiated or newcomers to the techware scene or acronym, it's a good way of helping to understand exactly what you're getting for that pretty chunky investment. This retailed at, I think, £1,500 in the UK, something like $1,800, I believe, from US retailers. And can such a high price really be worth it? Let's find out. I opted for the alpha green version, even though it does come in black, because, of course, I have enough black jackets already, but I also think that the alpha green version is the better option for this model for reasons that we'll come back to later. On body, I think this is a great looking jacket with so much to look at. It is inspired, of course, by military design as many of Acronym's products are, but upgraded in so many ways to make it not just more useful to civilian wearers, but in my opinion, look far cooler as well. It feels like every section has some kind of feature or element on it to the point that its departure from your run-of-the-mill rain jacket is very plain to see. It's also very different to some of those more under-the-radar acronym jackets like the J47 or the J27, for example. The J16 really does wear its performance quite literally on its sleeve. That's partly what attracted me to the J16 because I do like things where all those performance elements are very clearly visible. And I think for people that maybe own fewer acronym products or are looking for a kind of first jacket, if you're spending acronym money, you want the most acronym looking thing for the money. And uh, hard to deny that it certainly looks very acronym. This is still very much an if you know you know product. By default, there is zero external branding on here. It does come with a piece of logo tape that you can replace one of the existing ones at the collar if you want to, but that is literally it. And despite it being made of Gore-Tex Pro Most Breathable, one of their highest end uh, performance materials, you won't find any external Gore-Tex branding on this, which is almost unheard of. Almost no brands are even allowed to do this because of licensing agreements with Gore, so the fact that this doesn't have that branding on in itself makes it a pretty special product. Yes, it's obvious visually this is a very busy jacket, and I totally understand some people are not going to like it for that reason, I personally do, but all of those features and all those things to look at directly translate into performance elements. So let's look a little bit more in detail about what some of those are and how they work, because there's nothing on here which is just kind of tacked on just for the sake of it. Everything is useful, everything is designed to do something. One of the first things I want to talk about might seem on first glance like a bit of a weird addition. There is this single button to the middle of the jacket. The assumption here is, well, this is a very futuristic looking technical jacket overall, and a button is far more associated with classic menswear or something more heritage. We shouldn't forget though the military roots of the J16, even discounting that comparison that we drew earlier. Earlier versions of the J16, like the FW50, one I think it was, has large velcro patches on the shoulders instead, and that obviously uh, makes that military reference much plainer to see. Considering the prevalence of buttons on military gear, the addition therefore does feel less surprising. And on a jacket like this, where there is no kind of central pocket, like on the J1 or the J36, you don't have any means of concealing a central closure, whereas those jackets both have poppers underneath, so you can kind of use the pocket to close the jacket. An exposed popper might have felt more in keeping with a sort of urban technical kind of style, although I'd be willing to bet that without a pocket or anything to conceal it, would look a little bit silly just kind of sitting there by itself having this teeny tiny thing. So better to make more of an aesthetic feature of it and uh, also pick something 
um, that could stand up to the tension of closing the entire jacket by itself much better. I thought this would be something that I'd never really use, but I've actually found it relatively useful. Not only is that oversized button pretty easy to find without looking at it and easy to do up thanks to that angled button closure, but it actually does a pretty good job of securing the jacket in a very quick and very casual way. Because the uh, bottom zip is kind of restrained by the stretch Gore-Tex panel at the bottom, it means that there's a less ability to have that kind of semi-opened jacket look with a zip alone. So so using the button instead is a great way of getting across that same kind of look in a different way. Fortunately this button is also secured extremely well. It's attached to uh, this little material strip, meaning that it's not pulling directly on the Gore-Tex material. The first couple of times I did this jacket up, the material flap that goes underneath it did sort of catch on the zip track because I forgot about it, but now I'm more conscious of it. You just close one side of the jacket over the other before you do it up and uh, it definitely alleviates that issue. I mentioned the expansion zip at the bottom there. While it's not quite as versatile as on some jackets just because it doesn't go up quite as high, it is still of course a welcome addition. It makes the jacket a little bit more comfortable, especially when you're sitting down. I also found that leaving it undone makes it easier to do up the main zip because you can just grab the zip track without the whole right side of the jacket. If you're wondering why they have this at all and not just a double zip, which is one of those features that I love to talk about as a cool technical jacket feature, it's because this main zip is no ordinary main zip. It is using acronym Escape Zip technology, which means that you can pull the zip open from the top of the jacket, which will instantly pull the whole thing apart. This works really well. You can do it very quickly. You can do it one-handed. It's one of those things that you will never really find in a regular mainstream jacket for whatever reason, but is a nonetheless a very cool and a very fun feature to use. I found this useful when you're carrying stuff or when you just want to get this undone in a hurry, but as a result of that, being able to pull it open from the top like that, that isn't compatible with a double zip. So having the, the kind of second auxiliary zip at the side there is the solution. One thing I love the look of more than the functionality is those big shoulder pockets. They give a very plate armor kind of vibe and because they bulk out the shoulders, I feel make this jacket feel quite masculine on body. I just can't see myself making too much use out of these. Although they are relatively sizable, they are still by all accounts a small pocket, especially relative to some of the other ones that you'll find on here, which we'll go into later. But also they're not too difficult to undo, but getting them done up again, you do have to stabilize it with your other hand which means that you have to do the kind of like awkward grabbing claw kind of thing. They do look kind of cool though, and I can imagine it being the kind of thing that you would maybe carry something small in that you don't need regular access to, maybe, uh, I don't know, stick a gum, bit of chapstick, something like that. I'll use this opportunity to talk sizing before we move on to some of those big features, because you might have noticed that these shoulder pockets are hitting a little bit lower on me than they are in the initial product pictures. I normally go for size M in jackets, my J1A is a medium, but I kind of feel like I'm between sizes a little bit in that if I wear some big thick layers underneath that J1A it does start getting a teeny tiny bit restrictive so I wanted to try going up a size for a new acronym jacket and see kind of how that would compare. Um, it does definitely give a bit of an oversized look on me but I think it still works and it removes any potential feeling of tightness or snugness so uh, I think for the depths of winter when I've got to wear quite a few different layers if it does get particularly chilly out there in the UK as it so often does then uh, I would definitely be taking this over anything else, which uh, yeah, might start looking a little bit too bulked out for my liking. But in general, if you do nicely fit a particular size, I think your regular size will work just fine on this. And that is partly because of these awesome new Stretch GTX panels. Across the jacket, there are several tonal panels made from a relatively new gourmet fabric in contrast to the GTX Pro Most Breathable you'll find over most of the surface. They combine water resistance with unparalleled paralleled stretch performance. It's a little different to some soft shell materials in that it's two-way rather than four-way, but it's not an issue in this configuration. It was something they initially used with the J69HY last season, where they put it all across the back of the jacket. Well, they've kind of refined it this time and cut it down to uh, a triangle that you'll find on the back, and you'll also find triangles across the elbows as well. And those things really do make a tangible difference when you're moving around in this thing. It's the kind of thing that you're only really notice when you're kind of at the real limits of movement, like if you're really reaching for something, then that's the point where you'll feel those panels start to kick in. But for that reason and discounting the size difference, this does feel more comfortable
comfortable to wear than my J1, and I could definitely see myself getting very used to having this kind of stretch performance on a hard shell jacket, which, uh, yeah, from other brands is just not really something that you'll see very often at all. I'd be willing to bet that the stretch fabric doesn't quite have the same water resistance as the hard shell Gore-Tex Pro Most Breathable, so it's a good job that they have kept this to the relatively low traffic areas of the jacket. Obviously, most of the front is all your regular most breathable stuff, but they have, of course, uh, seam taped these different panels to help prevent any water coming in that way. Using this material for the bottom panels of the jacket I don't think adds quite as much utility as on the back or across the elbows. It's a minor comfort difference when putting your hands in the pockets, but it doesn't really allow for greater maneuverability. The back of this pocket is still the regular Gore-Tex, so it's not like the entire bottom of the jacket has that stretch performance associated with it. To be honest, that's kind of what the bottom zip is for, so I'm not too bothered about that. However, what it does do is give a really nice multi-layered effect, especially in alpha green, because that slight color difference is all the more visible, and it almost makes this look like a kind of cropped jacket with another thing hiding underneath. I think the tendency as well with having a lot of detail around the stomach is it tends to be kind of unflattering, kind of bulks things out too much, but I think they've kind of navigated that quite well in that not only are the pockets very, very flush with the jacket, you know, they don't bulk out the stomach area at all, and also by having the stretch material kind of slightly under the uh, Gore-Tex Pro that you'll find across the body of the jacket, it kind of gives this little step down. So again, it's helping to prevent that sort of bulky stomach look that sometimes can occur here. We really have to talk about these chest pockets though, because something that isn't really communicated is just how enormous these things are. The space runs right the way up to the shoulder, so if needed, you can carry absolutely huge items in here. A rolled up A3 sheet of paper, for example, would probably fit, which is pretty much unheard of in a jacket. I I actually nearly managed to get my keyboard in here. The only thing that stopped it was the size of the opening itself. The, the physical space is definitely big enough to fit one. The absolute limit of this space is, of course, something that you're relatively unlikely to use often, but one of those things where it might just come in clutch that one time when you need it. So I think this is definitely an example of a very well-considered design, where it has basically been totally hidden. When this pocket is empty, you really do have no idea that it extends all the way up to the shoulder blade. I haven't found the double zip here super useful over and above a single zip version, but it is one of those things because you can open the pocket from the bottom. If you're just using it to keep your hands in there, your hand isn't rubbing up against the bottom of the zip pull as it would do normally. So I guess uh, one of those teeny tiny little benefits that uh, all add up, I suppose. Moving down to the bottom of the jacket, we have a single popper to secure the hem. I found this a bit of an erroneous feature so far. I haven't found much use for it in that if I want to do the jacket up properly, I'll use the zip, but if I want the kind of semi-open, relaxed, casual look, I'll use the button, and uh, then I don't actually want the bottom of the jacket closed. So I guess this will maybe come in handy if you've got it done up with the button and then you think, oh, I'm getting a bit cold, but I can't be bothered to do up the zip properly, so I'll just secure the popper at the bottom. Maybe that's it. One of those things, I guess, it's not doing any harm it being there, so uh, maybe some people will find some use there. And if I'm missing something with this feature, then definitely let me know if, uh, if you think of something that might be useful there. How can we have a full-featured acronym jacket without mentioning the jacket sling? This is no different to the myriad other acronym jackets that come with exactly this feature. It uses a messenger style strap, which is definitely my preference. Super easy to take on and off, super easy to adjust as well. The mounting points are very secure also. You can have the mounting on the inside or the outside, so if you want uh, even more visual stuff, then you can stick this on the outside and you'll have those cool straps going across the back of the jacket. But it works great, it's very satisfying to do, it's a big kind of party trick feature in that your average person is going to think like, damn, that guy's wearing a, a jacket, but like on his back, that's pretty cool. Provides a genuine benefit too, of course, because there are times where you're going to heat up wearing this thing and you are going to want to take it off, and this makes it super easy to do so and super easy to carry around with you. You'll also find at the collar, acronym Force Lock, another thing that you'll find on many, many, many acronym jackets. Um, maybe a little bit riskier to use now that wireless headphones are so common, but it's another thing that you can make use of if you so choose. Detachable hood on the back here as well, very easy to take off and on again, uh, quicker than sort of rolling things up and putting 
putting it in the collar as well, although it does give a bit of a different look. You don't quite have that very like fat protected neck that you do on uh, roll up hoods. A single point of adjustment on the back, so not quite as much as some other jackets, but it certainly works well enough. I think the volume of this hood is really nice as well. It's big enough that you've got a little bit of space around the head, even with my enormous noggin, uh, but not so much that it's like the Beta LT where it's kind of designed for a helmet and there's absolutely loads of space. Um, but of course, still has that nice bit of articulation. If you do want to cinch this in, if it gets a little bit windy, you can keep this glued to your head and uh, still kind of moves around with you as you move your head. Back to the overall is it worth it discussion though, something that a lot of people might either miss or overlook, and certainly a point in favour of the alpha green version, have you noticed that pretty much everything on this jacket is tonal? We're talking zip tracks, we're talking velcro, we're talking shock cord adjustment hems, all of those teeny tiny little features, they are all different shades or very very similar shades of alpha green. A, this is not an easy thing to do to actually get all of these colours together which come from totally different manufacturers in different places and have them actually either match up or kind of work together visually and not just be kind of slightly awkward clashing off colors but b it's also more expensive than just buying all black hardware and going with that of course buying black things in general is cheaper but the fact that you have to split your inventory over different colors all of that stuff is going to make things more expensive it's one of the many parts of acronym products where you can tell that they are not sparing an expense on getting the product looking and feeling right there are in fact loads of little considerations which we'd be here all day if we talked in detail about things like the slightly extended zip garages which help keep Keep those zips nice and secure. The shock cord hems, which acronym use in quite a few of their jackets. All of those things, just those little details that elevate things beyond the kind of factory standard, run of the mill outerwear product. You can probably tell that I found a lot to like about this jacket. It has quickly become one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Even despite that slightly oversized fit on me, I do definitely feel like I'm kind of exactly in between medium and large, but nonetheless, it makes it really comfortable. I think the look of it is still pretty good as well, frankly especially with some nice chunky layers under it. The feature set is great, the performance is great, the aesthetics are great, and that color is just fantastic to me as well. I really do like it. Do all of those things collectively make a jacket like this worth it though? Of course, to an extent, it's up to you, but in my opinion, there are so few brands that truly can balance this high level of aesthetics and high level of performance that you do have to pay over the odds for that unique combination of the two. Not to mention the weight of the acronym brand name and everything that represents as well. Let's face it, there is a certain allure with being able to say, I've bought an acronym jacket as opposed to anything else. And as well, despite this being part of the retailer drop, it is gonna be made in far smaller quantities than your average outerwear product. And when you're not getting those same economies of scale, that does inevitably make products more expensive too. We could probably do a whole video on is acronym worth it? And I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching and thinking, yeah, totally understand that this has a kind of bigger feature set than most products. But to me, that doesn't equate to the, you know, massively higher price. And frankly, you're not wrong. This is well past the point of diminishing returns for price performance. And you are kidding yourself if you think that you need all of these features or you need the J16 GT. But I think this is extremely cool and it's a great example of why Acronym is so well regarded in this space. It's a great looking jacket in my opinion. It has a great full feature set. It's just doing so many different things. Um, yeah, there is really a lot to like, I feel. That's all I have to say on the J16. It's been something of a mammoth video, but I do hope it's helpful being able to have some content which goes really in detail about some of this stuff, especially if you're looking at picking something like this up where uh, you maybe don't want to buy something just off a couple of pictures you want to see like things in motion and just get a little bit more of a, uh, a sense of this item if you enjoyed the video please do give it a like it is of course massively appreciated it tells the youtube algorithm that uh, i'm very cool as well which makes me feel happy and uh, yeah that's everything so again thank you so much for watching we will see you next week with another one so many great comments on last week's video. Thank you so much for all those responses. Uh, it definitely hit home, it seems, uh, for quite a lot of you guys. Um, so yeah, Caleb, um, yeah, massive thanks for your comment. Uh, Guzzy Hero kind of equating the uh, the jacket collecting to the Transformers collecting can definitely see the, uh, the similarity between the two there.
And shout out to Kweima, definitely wise words there, would certainly recommend following that, which maybe goes at odds with a YouTube channel that is based entirely around products. But uh, yeah, it's all about that responsible consumption, buying less but buying better. That's what I'm all about. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to catch some more, there's going to be links going up at the top. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. There's going to be some more cool techwear content. Um, I've ordered some fun new uh, lower tier, shall we call them, techwear products, which will be fun for a little video. Um, I still have some valence things to do. There may well be some more acronym as well. We'll see. Um, I'm feeling a little bit sore in the wallet department after this season. But uh, yeah, we'll see how things go. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Catch you next week.